Volux is the first hyaluronic acid filler approved in the U.S. for the jawline. It is twice as firm and cohesive as Voluma, meaning it has twice the lift and is twice as resistant to compression. There's very little water absorption, so swelling of the filler is minimal. The hyaluronic acid content is 25 milligrams per milliliter, the highest amount of any HA filler. The FDA trials were for one year duration, and longer duration has been seen in Europe and Canada, where it's been used over the past few years. Volux is injected along the edge of the mandible or the jawline, at the angle of the jaw and in the lower chin. The purpose is to define the jawline. It's to be used in conjunction with mid-face and outer cheek volume replacement, as well as volume replacement and definition of the chin. Voluma is used for the cheeks and chin and should be the initial phase of treatment to be followed by Volux. In some younger patients, it's possible that only Volux may be needed to define the jaw. Placement is either deep or on the bone with a needle or superficial placed under the skin with a cannula. This is similar to how we currently use Voluma. Due to the density of Volux and its placement just over the bone, tenderness after treatment is expected. As with all fillers, mild swelling, tenderness, and bruising are possible. Volux can be manipulated just after placement, similar to Voluma. Like all HA fillers, Volux is reversible with the use of hyaluronidase. The only other filler FDA approved for jawline definition is Radius, a particulate filler that cannot be dissolved in the event of undesired placement or due to medical complications or undesired outcome. Studies show that up to 70% of Americans are, bo are bothered by their jowls and 30% are bothered by their weak or narrow jawline. Google searches for jawline filler have increased tenfold in the past five years, with 40% considering treating their jawline or jowls within the next year. The number of syringes needed will vary based on anatomy, goals, and overall presence of facial aging, with two to five being expected. Structural filler with Voluma to the cheeks and chin should take place first, if in indicated. In terms of injection principles, the key areas of concern in the mandibular region are the vessels of the antagonial notch, the marginal mandibular nerve, the masseter muscle, the parotid mesenteric fascia, the parotid gland and duct, and mandibular vessels. The injection is placed either subcutaneous with a cannula or supraperiosteal on top of the bone with a needle. Inject small volume slowly while keeping the needle or cannula moving. The non-injecting fingers are used to guide placement. Posterior jawline treatment should be with cannula to avoid the parotid gland, duct, and facial artery or vein. The angle of the mandible should be injected anteriorly to avoid the posterior mandibular vessels.